I invited Senator Debbie Stabenow from Michigan, who helped shape the Farm Bill, to talk about its impact on agriculture across the country, and especially right here in the Great Lakes region. Let's talk about agriculture as a whole that we know is so important right. across the country. How is it different here in the Great Lakes Basin? I have had to really stress this point. People look at me coming in when I was chairing the committee and said, what's somebody from a car state doing chairing the agriculture committee? So uh, wait, wait, wait. We, yes, we are proud of our cars. We are proud of manufacturing. But we not only make things, we grow things. And so we have more diversity of crops, different kinds of things that we grow than any other state but California. People now know that. And uh, it is important to us that the farm bill reflect all kinds of things. That's what I think I've brought to this. It's not just traditional corn, wheat, soybeans, which are all very important, traditional grains. It's everything, it's horticulture, it's forestry, it's floriculture, it's fruits and vegetables, it's local foods, farmers markets. Uh, making sure fresh fruits and vegetables are uh, more available. So we do all of that in this farm bill. What's the delicate balancing act between running a successful farm, and you have farmers all over the country and around the basin who are trying to do that, but with also protecting the environment around them? Well, our farmers, frankly, are our best environmentalists. They want to make sure the land is protected and the water and the air. They're, they're stewards of the land. Uh, and. So I, don't, I think it's a coming together. It's how you do it. It's the partnerships that we do through the Farm Bill where we say, if you deal with your uh, uh, manure operation and we stop the runoff into the local stream, the USDA will come in and partner with the costs on that. We know it costs money to do that. We know it's in their interest, but it's also in all of our interests uh, to make sure that the land is protected and so we'll partner on the cost end. It's, it helps create tools for farmers to manage their operations and, and it helps all of us protect our land and water. I want to talk a little bit about our food supply. Never before have we been so, I think, engaged in where our food comes right. from, how it's grown, and how it right. gets from farm to table. Right. Talk to me a little bit about how the Farm Bill addresses organics mm -hmm. and uh, farmers markets, and what kinds of programs could we be seeing soon? Well, um, this is an area that I'm very, very pleased uh, about where we really are taking the next step in terms of uh, addressing local food systems and the ability to connect the local school with the farm, with the restaurant, with the hospital. We have wonderful programs going on uh, in Michigan where we're connecting uh, young people from a health standpoint, nutrition standpoint, school standpoint, food standpoint. Um, and we expand on that. We have uh, done more for organics than ever before in this uh, bill to help with research, uh, to help be able to get folks started in organic farming. Uh, we do what's called local food systems, food hubs, where farmers can come together and get funding to put together distribution systems. So let's say you have a restaurant or a hospital and they say, you know, I'd like to get local tomatoes and celery and lettuce and so on, but I don't have time to go to 20 different farmers and figure this out. You can go online to the local food hub. You can check off what you want in each category. The food hub will then package it and put it together and deliver it. So it's a way to buy locally but yet have a way to do it that meets the farmer's needs and the community's needs. And of course, farmer's markets are growing in every single uh, community, and that's very exciting. Another thing that's growing, it seems like, is urban farming as well, as yes. we're seeing it happen in cities all around the Great yes. Lakes space. And what does yes. the Farm Bill do for urban farming? Well, we expand on urban farming as well. And in fact, after being all over the country, uh, I found that we actually have the experts in Michigan. In fact, our Detroit urban farmers are the experts. They're viewed as the experts around the country. Really? They really are. And uh, so that's a, a point of pride. And we're seeing it in all of our cities now, where we are uh, expanding the ability to have local gardens, whether it's in schools or neighborhoods, or urban farming. And then the big thing, I think, is how do we leverage that to create more jobs? So for instance, in Detroit, with Eastern Market, which is doing a phenomenal job, by the way, of bringing together our farmers and the, the and people in the city and, and urban farming, um, there's a kitchen that's going to be opened up to, that will allow people a kitchen incubator, like a business incubator, where you can share space and if you want to make a food product, 
that can get licensed and be sold in a store, you would be able to use that space for a few weeks or be able to rent the space. Why is that important? Because you have to have a commercial kitchen to get licensed and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars to do a commercial kitchen. People can't do that, but you could go rent one for a couple of weeks or for a month and make that salsa, make that jam, you know, do it, uh, put together that recipe and then sell it. So what I'm looking to do is leverage agricultural strength uh, more access to healthy foods in, in urban areas, but then leverage it to the next step, which is people going into small businesses. I mean, there's a lot of things that we are doing that uh, we're looking forward to implementing. The work is never done. Never done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. joining me. I appreciate it.